Howdy doody buckaroonies, and welcome back to another episode of Morning Coffee with Cameron. I am currently in the middle of working on this big trailer library of things like impacts and Brahms and all this other crazy stuff that's super, super fun, and I've learned a lot throughout this process. But I find myself in a very rare position where I can actually show you how I have made a bunch of these sounds. Typically, when I'm hired for a sound design project due to legal agreements, non-disclosure agreements, and industry trade secret protection agreements, and all this kind of stuff, I can't actually legally show you how I make the sounds I make. And this makes it kind of hard to do sound design YouTube videos because normally I would love to just show you what I'm working on and how it works and why, but due to all these legal agreements, I can't actually do that. So I have to make all this new stuff and it's kind of a huge pain and it's just a lot of work. But because this client has agreed to allow me to show how this stuff was made so long as I don't disclose what it's for or anything like that, I can actually give you an inside look at some of the stuff I've made. And that's a really, really cool thing and I wanted to take advantage of that very rare opportunity. You can create these sounds in literally any synthesizer. All it needs is a noise generator, a filter, a couple of envelopes, and velocity sensitivity, so pretty much any synthesizer should do that. Today, I'm gonna to be using UVI Falcon because it offers a couple of extra things that make this a lot cooler, which we'll talk about, but the core idea can be done in any synthesizer and just some stock plugins in your DAW. So let's take a listen to the final results and then break down how you can make this stuff. Okay, so here is one of the first examples, and it sounds like this. Pretty dope stuff. Let's take a listen to one more. Pretty cool stuff, right? So this is a technique that has been around for a very long time, really for as long as like synthesis stuff has existed, this technique has been done. It's simply making drums out of noise. When it comes to designing a sound, there are four key categories in mind that I need to think about before approaching a sound. These are frequency, time, amplitude, and timbre. First up, we have frequency. When I hear a sound, I need to know what kind of components it's made up of. Is it mostly low frequencies? Is it a lot of high frequencies? How do these frequencies change and interact over time? So in the case of drums, they're pretty broad spectrum. There's some bright stuff, there's some low stuff, there's a pitch decline, so the frequencies change a little bit over time, and that's kind of the core idea in terms of frequency. Next up, we have amplitude. So how loud are these things? How quiet are these things? Are they loud and quiet? What differences are there between loud and quiet? How much room is there between loud and quiet? And how does the loud and quiet affect the overall sound, which we'll talk about more in the timbre category. Then we've got time. How does the sound interact over time? In the case of a drum, it's pretty straightforward. It's very loud at the beginning and it goes boom, and then it gets quiet. This length of time kind of depends on the size of the drum and some other characteristics. So that's really that. And that brings us to timbre, which is a very broad overarching category that is just about the tone of things. Is it warm? Is it dark? Is it dull? Is it metallic? Is it really inharmonic? Is it very tonal? How does the timbre change over time or based on other characteristics? In the case of drums, there's quite a few considerations here. We have velocity and velocity will change the timbre of the drum from a more tonal boom, 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 to a very loud <laughs> So I need to have something set up in my patch in order to replicate that. In this case, we're gonna tie a lot of parameters to velocity, and that way we get a difference between da 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 da, -da and da <laughs> In the case of this, we've got kind of a tonal thing and a very loud, super noisy thing. So that's really the four big categories of sound. Now, when I'm emulating big cinematic percussion, we're going to be emulating things like the Tycho drums and whatever that are just these huge, massive drums. And in case you haven't noticed, I really don't have anything like that just lying around here. I don't have a bunch of percussionists and I certainly don't have a huge cathedral space to record it in. So I had to get a little bit creative in order to fill out the big percussive sounds of this library. So I simply used noise. If you listen to some Tycho Ensemble performances, I can't show any here just for the sake of, you know, stupid YouTube copyright things. It's very, very loud and it almost distorts that it's so loud and huge. So that made it pretty easy to figure out like, okay, I could probably just use some noise because that's just broad spectrum stuff and add a little bit of tone and maybe shape it with some EQ and ta-da, we've got big, super heavy Tycho drum type of things because it's just this huge, 
loud, explosive sound. So with that, I was ready to get started. So let's break this down from a brand new patch. Within our synthesizer, we're first going to need a noise oscillator. So you can do this in Serum, you can do this in whatever you want. And I'm gonna use white noise. And right now, if we give this a play, wow, that sounds like trash. So thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my OnlyFans. So we need to, we need to fix that, because that, that's hot garbage and that is unacceptable. So first, we're gonna need to take into consideration our two main categories, which are frequency and time. So we've got our frequencies covered because white noise is across the entire spectrum, but we don't really have time covered because it's just, and it doesn't sound like a drum. So we need to add some decay. So I'm gonna drop the sustain down and I'm gonna drop the decay down to something relatively short. Now, it sounds a bit more like a drum, maybe like a snare or something. Let's increase the dynamic range a bit. So we have more quiet and we have more loud. Now we need to adjust a couple of things because right now it's just a single decay and release. And that doesn't really work because if we listen to a taiko ensemble, as they play really hard, we get these huge bum, 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 you know, ringing out things. So what we can do is tie the velocity response to the decay of the envelope. So now if we give this a play, soft is very short and loud, much longer decay time. So this is gonna take a bit of tweaking. And that sounds about right. If we play quiet, we get short little percussive bursts. And if we play loud, that sounds about right. Maybe just a little bit less. Cool, and now we're starting to get somewhere. So now we need to start going back to our category of frequency because we've got most of the frequency stuff covered, but not quite yet. Because if we listen to a drum, we get a big burst of transient energy that's very bright at the beginning, and then it becomes more dark and explosive towards the end. If you think about a kick drum, there's that bright, click at the beginning and then it goes out to boom. So we need to emulate that and we can do that using a filter. Here in Falcon, I'm just gonna go in and add a basic filter. Let's just use the expander filter for the sake of time. So now we've got a filter at 1K, it's just a low pass filter. But now it's not doing anything and we need to fix that. So now let's do a little bit of modulation. What I'm going to do is assign an envelope to the cutoff, and then we're going to control that envelope with some velocity. So I'm gonna add modulation, and I'm gonna add another ADSR, or just a regular old envelope. So we're gonna shape this filter to open up at the beginning and be very bright and open, and then it's gonna close off and be darker. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Let's drop this down a bit, and let's change the range of the response. And now, cool. We've got that going on. So let's drop the decay down to really short again. Now we've got little percussive bursts. Now let's open up the decay a bit based on velocity. So we'll do that at about 17%, I believe is what we used. Cool, now we're starting to get somewhere. So this is really, really quiet. Let's bring up a bit of overdrive from the filter. Cool, let's add some more dynamic range here. Let's maybe increase this slightly. Cool, and let's just add a bit more opening to that filter. That's not quite open enough because we need that really bright energy. Cool, now we've got our basic sound. So now we need to start messing with the other categories, which is timbre. So this right now, just sounds like noise going through a filter. It's not that impressive. It doesn't really sound like a drum. So let's start shaping this sound with a little bit of EQ. First up, let's take a look at our spectrum overall. Not really well balanced, mostly balanced towards upper mids at this point. So we need to bring in some low end energy. I'm gonna do that with a resonant high pass here. So right at about maybe 60 hertz or so, we're starting to get some low end weight. So let's enhance that with a bell curve. Cool, and now it's starting to sound more like a drum. Cool, now our envelopes are a bit weird because they don't really have much release. So let's add a little bit of release here, just so they breathe a bit. And that sounds a lot more natural. Let's start shaping this a bit more. I'm gonna cut out some
kind of some mud there. Let's add some energy. Right about there. Let's add maybe just a bit of high shelf. Cool, let's give that a play. Nice. I think the filter opens up a little too much. Let's drop the cutoff down slightly. And now we're really starting to get rocking and rolling here. Let's add one more boost to the low end. Now we're starting to get that nice kind of subby movement. So now with that, we're pretty much done, but let's add a couple of extra effects here. So one of the big things with the big Tycho ensembles is that it's so loud that the mic capsule will often distort a bit or our ears will even distort because the sound is just so huge and massive. So let's add an effect for that. Let's go into drive and distortion. Let's add a wave shaper. What we're gonna use is a tan H waveform. Really, this is just a soft clipper is all this is. So let's add a little bit of drive. And because we've got this aggressive low boost going into it, it's going to overdrive really easy. So a little bit goes a long, long way. Let's drop the output down slightly. And now we've got something that sounds a lot more like a drum ensemble. So let's maybe shape this a little bit. Just messing with the EQ till it sounds right. Cool. Let's maybe filter out just a bit of that super subby stuff. And we've got our core sound, and this sounds a lot more like a drum, but one of the things we're missing now is part of the timbre category, which is the sound propagating in a room. Like I said, in case you haven't noticed, don't really have a huge room to record in here. So there are a couple ways I can get around this. One, I could put a microphone out here in my room, play this a couple of times, get a bunch of samples and record it here. But instead, what's easier is to use a convolution reverb. A convolution reverb, in case you didn't know, uses what's called an impulse response. An impulse response is essentially a sample, but it's a sample of a sound propagating in a room generated by either a sweep or a broad spectrum sound like a balloon popping or a hand clap to get the response of the room over time to create a reverb. With that said, we've got some acoustic spaces here and I'm just gonna go for like a church or something, you know, a big, huge room that these drums are gonna play in. And with that, we're gonna start to get something that sounds really pretty convincing. So this is sounding a bit flubby. Let's shape the low end a bit. Cool, this is maybe a bit bright. So let's shape the damping of the high end. I think the high end might just be a bit brittle. So let's maybe back it off a bit and instead enhance around maybe 5K. And that's starting to sound a lot more realistic. We could try some other responses here. Let's maybe do Let's go to acoustic spaces. How about a concert hall? So that's a bit dull. Let's maybe brighten it up a bit. Maybe we'll just try a different one because that just doesn't sound super exciting and interesting. Maybe we could just try the uh, cathedral. Yeah, that's pretty epic. Let's shorten the time a bit. Cool, I think that is pretty good. A little bit wet, but we can fix that later. One final thing we're missing is probably just a bit of dynamic control. So let's maybe grab just a maximizer or something along those lines, limiter. Cool. And now, since we've got that after the reverb, it's gonna kind of crush that tail a bit. Let's move that uh, before the reverb. That way we get the reverb after the compression and stuff.
And that's really all there is to this whole process. From here, we could just reshape this with some EQ and maybe change out the reverb for something different. If you need a free convolution reverb, you can use something like Convology XT. There are tons of impulse responses you can download online. And now we've got our drums. So in terms of the final versions of these sounds, let's just quickly explore a couple ideas that I use to enhance all of this stuff. One of the big things I did was use different impulse responses. I ran these through a metal tool sound. I've got that same kind of big boosting EQ here. But one of the other things I did is start to layer this up with a couple of extra things. One of the things I did was create some inharmonic signs and these react much like you would design a kick drum with a sine wave where there's a pitch envelope. And that way I get a bit of tone to the drum. So I've got our noise layer made the exact same way. Not really much to talk about, it's just white noise. It's got the same filter, really not exciting stuff. Mid layer, three different sine waves, really detuned. Provides just a bit of tone like a drum would have. The sub layer, FM oscillator, tuned down to like 20 to 50 Hertz. That provides that nice low layer. And then a sample layer, which is combined of several different samples. Uh, just did some recordings in my garage. So I've got just a bunch of tools rattling and stuff like that. This is random cycle. So it's gonna pick between all of these different samples randomly every time I press. That way we're not getting like a machine gunning effect. I also randomized the pitch a little bit with a random modulator. So I went to add modulation and went to other random. This way it's just gonna offset the pitch ever so slightly. So it's gonna sound like there are way more samples than there are. When you combine all of this stuff together, you get a lot of different interest and movement. And that is designing some big badass cinematic percussion using some white noise and maybe just a couple of samples. Like I said, you can do this in any synth, serum, rapid, falcon, phase plant, whatever you wanna do. It just takes some noise, some filtering, some EQ, and a little bit of time to adjust different things responding to velocity as well as a decent convolution reverb. That wraps everything up for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something and I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome. So thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and I will see you guys again soon.